when I was a kid, someone gave me Risk, the board game, as a gift, and I loved it. I would play it all the time with family, with friends, whoever would want to play with me. We could sit down for hours to play this game. Later on, as a teenager, I discovered civilization-type games on the computer. And in these games, you start out with a Stone Age people, you make a village for them, you oversee the collection of resources, you start training and sending out soldiers, you develop infrastructure like schools and hospitals, you make uh, new scientific discoveries, you build the people up, acquire new land, expand and grow and maybe even take over the world. These games are incredibly popular, even though none of us are really in any kind of similar position. We love to play God. We love to see what it would be like to start up a new society in our way, by our rules. Early in the Bible, there's a story of a people who are building up their society. It's a strange story by itself, but when we think of it, through this kind of game that people would play, all of a sudden it makes more sense, at least to me. See, in this story, the people are settling. After the, the devastation of the flood, the people are building up their society, and they decide that they're going to build up a tower so high that it could reach up to the heaven. And they decide that they're going to do this as a show of their strength and as a show of their unity sounds like a good idea, but God doesn't see it that way. God comes down and he confuses the language of the people, is what the story says. And the people can't work together, and so they spread out from there and fill up the whole world. Of course, working together is a good thing. Cooperating is a good thing, and having the people who come after you remember you, those are all good things. But if you're playing the civilization type games that I mentioned before, then you know that putting all of your work into legacy type projects interferes with the work that you're putting into the rest of it. You see, in the games, you have to be developing technology. In, in the game, you have to be developing your military, even if it's for self-defense. In the game, you have to be managing resources. And if you can balance all of those, you have a good shot of winning or at least completing the mission that you're given. But if you throw any of those out of whack, if you throw, if you put any of those as an emphasis over the others, then you're not going to win uh, the way that you're supposed to. You see, the instructions, I believe, that were given in the Bible have also a practical value. Because all of the things in the game mirror the things of real life that we do as a society need to be working on advancement. As a, as a society, we do need to be thinking about who our neighbors and who our enemies are and what they want to do to us. In, in life, we also have to manage our resources so that we don't take too much, so that we're sustainably harvesting and regrowing what we need. And in life, we build up legacy projects, but we only do that from our surplus. So if we turn things around and make the legacy the emphasis, uh, then it's going to interfere with how much resources we have because all of our resources will go into the legacy. If we put all of our emphasis in the legacy, it will make our neighbors jealous of us. It will make ourselves a target of those enemies and of those neighbors. You see, with the legacy project, that the people of Babel put up. It was interfering with everything else. And there's one more aspect that we sometimes forget about. Life isn't just for advancement. Life isn't just for defense. Life isn't just about resources. Life is about deeper things, a spiritual connection with God. Uh, and also there's an inherent struggle for survival that we in our comfortable uh, contemporary reality, uh, like to take for granted, but that wasn't the case. So when the ark settled, when the people were reestablishing themselves, God gave them a command that they were supposed to go out, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. And in doing that, they would find new resources. They would find new lands. And when they found one place that wasn't sustainable, they could move to the next. 
But if they only stayed in one place working on one project with one group of people, then the survival of the whole group could fall apart. This is uh, a symbol for us of our own projects. When we put all of our efforts into one thing, and my son built this inspired by me telling the story of the Tower of Babel. But if we put all of our efforts into one thing, then all of the other things suffer. That, I believe, is the real story of the Tower of Babel.